Okay, so how do we do something that is easier to mount to a kit bot, um, is relatively inexpensive, and gets us the ability to make a single jointed arm easily. Um, so I started with the idea that we have two um, sort of identical plates that mount to the sides of the kit bot. So there's enough room and enough holes to be able to bolt through in a few different places and get this bolted. Um, Feel free, you can kind of ignore these extra holes for a bit. A lot of them are just because there's different places along the kitbot chassis that you can mount to and they have different holes everywhere. Because um, none of these holes are really meant for mounting um, other features. A lot of them are meant for like different drivetrain configurations. Like if you change the length or width of the kitbot, you can change where the wheels are. So a lot of those holes are there for that. There's some different places for like different standoffs in those different configurations that we're using for mounting. So there's all sorts of different places you can mount it. Um, but this is the rough concept up here. Um, so, yeah, so roughly it was like, okay, so we know we need a pretty high reduction um, because this arm only has to move 90-ish degrees, maybe a little more depending on what the application is, um, but kind of roughly 90 degrees. So we need a lot of reduction to the arm to be able to have enough torque to actually move it the way we want um, without breaking anything. Um, and just to make it easier to control, you want to have a lot of gear reduction. Even if it could be done with less, the arm would just move really fast. Um, and you don't want that. You want it to actually be able to be nice and controlled and smooth motion. Um, so to do that, um, I started with a Neo 550 so that it has an internal encoder and everything, so we don't have to worry about mounting sensors anywhere. Um, this is a Andy Mark Sport gearbox that can do 100 to 1 reduction. So the output of this gearbox is 100 times slower than the motor is spinning by itself. From there, it's mounted to a 18 tooth gear, which would be steel in real life. So it can help make sure we're not breaking teeth here. And then this big gear is a 66 tooth gear, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Um, so it's 18 to 66. And that puts us at a total gear reduction of somewhere I have written down somewhere, 366-ish. Um, to one, so that's relatively okay. I probably would want more reduction if we could do it cheaply, but adding a whole nother stage just adds complexity to the whole system, and you can probably get by without without it. Um, I think say the rotational speed of this arm is somewhere in like the uh, it's like point. It's like a quarter second full revolution, so you would drive it a lot slower than that. You don't want you don't want this up down to be an eighth of a second or whatever that ends up being um, for ninety degrees of rotation. So you would you wouldn't drive it at full speed basically ever. You would drive it much lower voltage, um, which is good. You don't want to be wasting battery power if you don't need to, and you don't need the you don't need as much torque as you have on it for most of like the wrist or arm application if we wanted to do that. Um, let's see, the, this gear is actually a bearing bore gear, so there's no hex shaft involved at all. It has room for a um, bronze bushing. So the whole thing is spinning on these two bronze bushings that have a seven eighths ID. So we have a seven eighths tube going through the middle of it. So you get a much stronger, stiffer joint than just using a piece of half inch hex shaft or anything just because your um, outside diameter is bigger so it's harder to bend that um, piece of tube. Um, the hex shaft would work. You could very easily swap this to um, hex shaft and bearings if you wanted to. It gets a little bit more expensive, but it's not bad at all, it would work. Um, and this is mounted to the gear through the um, holes that are already in the gear 
There's also holes on this little bracket or this little gusset that we may drill through to get them slightly farther out on the gear because that gets us a little bit better torque, um, a little bit better levered arm. So we're basically just like drill a hole. There's a hole somewhere up there and a hole somewhere down there. That may help. You can't go too much further out um, without hitting things, but it might be worth it. Um, that's an interesting idea. Um, okay, so... Yeah, and then there are some standoffs on the plate to hold everything together. So there's like a following the Andy Mark example of how they do the drivetrain. These are just standoffs that are churro that are tapped. So you'd have a quarter 20 bolt going into this on both sides and that would hold it together. Um, you could do it in a different way. This is just the standard way that they do it. And these are actually the same size churro that comes with everything. Um, this one internally would have to get a quarter inch smaller to fit this plate. Right now it just like goes through the plate in this CAD. Um, you'd have to cut that down in real life if we were making it. Um, what was I gonna say? There'd be a bolt that goes all the way through this tube and, and a nut on the other side. So that this whole thing kind of gets squished together and held in place. Um, yeah, and then right now the other side isn't driven because if we try to do any sort of heck shaft across and you have two gears on the same heck shaft, um, that becomes problematic because none of the gears that are sold have their hex interfaces actually indexed to any of the gear teeth. So like a point on the hex could be anywhere along um, the gear teeth. So if you try to do two sets together on the same hex shaft, they're not gonna line up um, precisely anywhere. Um, so like once you try to mount these gears to the arms and have the hex going, nothing is guaranteed to line up. Um, so you may end up having some kind of odd loads or trying to like rotate the gear into different spots to get one that kind of works. Um, and it's very possible it does sort of work, but it's definitely not guaranteed to work in any way. Um, okay, any questions about the powertrain version of this, like how it's driven? Okay, um, ideally this is for shorter arms. You probably wouldn't want to have a really long arm driven this way. Um, at some point you get too much load um, out at the end of the arm, depending on what you're like picking up and moving around, that you will start breaking these gear teeth um, because we don't have uh, an easy option to do like 118 did with their gear runner where they had the, they changed the gear pitch of the gears and they made their own where they had a 12 pitch gear instead of a 20 pitch gear, which gets them a lot stronger gear teeth. If you do were to like try to sit on this or something and have it lift you up and you had way too much weight on the arm, you would break these gear teeth um, probably pretty easily. So there's some things we can do in code to make sure we limit current to this motor. Um, so ideally we can prevent any of that, um, we can prevent the gear teeth from breaking. Um, we also want to make sure, since we're not driving the other side, we want this to be pretty rigid right across here at the pivot point. So you'd have a tube or something going across these two. Um, these can be drilled and gusseted together so that if there's you take some of the flex out um, of the entire arm assembly. If this tube wasn't here or this tube was a lot farther forward, it might be very easy for this one as it goes up to get a lot higher than this one just because it can flex a lot more towards the back, which we don't want. Um, again, none of this has been actually built, so there may be other issues with it. We'll go through and try to find problems. Um, but ideally what I would like to see is this modified with things to be put on the end. So basically have you all choose some game from the past, right? You can be like, okay, I want to do 2016. And then you add a mechanism to the front of it that were, would grab the ball in 2016. It would work the defenses. Um, so we could see how this would work in other, in previous games. Um, 
So you could choose whatever game you wanted, right? Some version can do a version of the gear runner in the same way where you build a gear, um, a gear pickup and figure out how it would be used in the 2017 game. Um, the 2020 game could probably have some version of like the EveryBot box put on this um, and still figure out how to intake balls from the floor, from the feeder station and score them. Um, there's probably other creative things you can do. I'm not gonna, like there's some sample ideas of how this would be played, but ideally I wanna see how people can mount things to the front of this, even if it's not fully in CAD, if you wanna take like, I'll probably make some images if people wanna draw stuff on it for, um, next week or get some initial ideas going. Um, we don't need to necessarily have full CAD. The more CAD we can do, the better. We do need to have people working on it and getting more familiar with CAD. Um, but ideally this is a pretty, um, like one aspect of a robot that people can work on um, and doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't need to be every detail flushed out or anything or flushed out. Um, a lot of it can just be, um, boxes, wheels, whatever. Um, it definitely doesn't need to be perfect to get started. And then we can move on from there as we get, we can refine and add details to it as we go. Um, does that seem like something people want to work on or help with? Yes, that seems fun. Yeah, the end goal is basically we would have this document that eventually, ideally we would build one of these or a few of them at some point. Um, Cause we have, the EveryBot kitbot, we have another kitbot that we can assemble um, if we need to and basically be able to test these kind of manipulators and then produce some document like, hey, if people can make this plate, which the vast majority of the rookie teams can find someone to make them these plates, whether it's out of plastic or aluminum, you can definitely make this. It's not a super complicated part to make. Um, and then once you can make that, everything else can be done basically with hand tools um, so we have these examples going back to where we say, hey, with this singular part, right, four of these parts, plus a few hundred bucks in other stuff, you can kind of play most old games. Um, I think that gets really interesting for a lot of teams without a ton of work. Um, we could probably, like, going into... 2022, I guess, because we know what next year's game is. Um, but in like 2022, whatever the game is, we could very quickly, someone could work on what we would mount to this and you could even, we can even have it as like a test robot very fast. Um, there's lots of different things you can do inside here for like counterbalancing. I was modeling a torsion spring. So it helps like take some of the load off the arm and make the arm more balanced um, by using the spring. There's other stuff you could do where you have, if you had a frame in the back, you could easily have like surgical tubing being pulled up a pulley or something and wanting to pull the arm up depending on how much load you actually have on the end of the arm. Um, there's a version of this, I think, that lets you mount this plate um, kind of sideways and use it as an elev as use it as like the wrist on an elevator. Um, I don't know where the, this one? Yeah, so like, it kind of works to where you could probably, there's a bunch of room here where we could add holes to where you could figure out how to mount this to box tubing this way. And now this whole thing, like if this was an elevator rail going up and down, you could have a wrist that in like, if you had, if you wanted to move all the way up to having an elevator, you could move it up and down and actually use it that way. Um, I think that works. That's something we'd have to look at if somebody wants to tackle a little bit more of a challenge in moving it to an elevator. Um, oop, that's not correct. Um, does anyone have any questions about how far I've gotten or anything else about this design? Uh, I think the biggest thing for now is just kind of figure out how do we mount stuff to the ends of these tubes that lets us play various games from the past is kind of what I would like to see. Um, 